Today we're doing the installation of the X9000 on the Suron Ultra B. And before we go anywhere on this bike, what we really want to do is make sure we turn the regen off. So before you remove your old controller, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the menu settings and you're going to going to select regen to engine regen zero and braking regen zero because the regen is actually not stored in the controller at all. It's stored in the battery. So what's going to happen when you plug the X9000 in on the Ultra V battery is it's going to say that it has regen and it's not going to work. It's going to give you a fault right away. Unfortunately, one of the limitations of the X9000 is the fact that it doesn't offer regen due to the stock battery's limitations. So you will not get regen on the Ultra V, but obviously you will get a wider range of performance values that the X9000 delivers. So with that being said, the display thumb throttle will not be part of the build today. What eBMX has designed is they've designed their controller to work with all the original componentry that comes on the Ultra B, including your dash, kill switch, throttle, eco, drive, and sport modes, headlight, horn, all that stuff is gonna work with the X9000. Let's get into the build and see how easy this thing is to plug and play. The eBMX X9000 delivers tons of power with smooth, reliable tunability. With a 50 kilowatt output, six fully customizable power levels, three each in race and street mode. It also comes with a new feature called wheel lift assist, which we'll tap into in another video. What's gonna come in the X9000 box is a regen throttle, a Bluetooth connector, a bag of bolts, now these are the required bolts for your phase amps and power cables due to the depth and a two to one cable. Now we're not gonna actually be using the two to one cable because of the, how the Ultra B is set up. It also comes with an instruction card. This is gonna be your Ultra B wiring harness. You are gonna realize immediately that it has one less cable than the rest of the harnesses. This is missing your two to one cable output that would be used for your regen throttle and screen. This doesn't come with it because the lack of regen on the Ultra Beam. So we're not gonna be installing that in this build. The harness kit also comes with brackets to install the harness on the Ultra Beam and also a bag of bolts. You're gonna to wanna to start by removing the seat, the battery, everything that's gonna be surrounding the controller to give yourself access to it and switch that bad boy up because this is the lifeblood of the bike all the cables and arteries are going to flow through there. So let's uh, give it a start by tearing this guy down and we'll get back to you when it's all said and done. Alexa, turn the volume up. You're gonna start by using a four mil Allen key to take apart the front end of the controller. Unscrew the bolts of the controller and it should just pop off. Remember to keep all your bolts in an organized fashion. EBMX is gonna provide you new bolts for your phase amps and everything in between, but just in case we wanna make sure that we have everything that needs to go back in in case we need to put it back on. We have the controller now loose and what we're gonna start doing is peeling back some of the rubber and getting into the base amp connections on the back of the controller and the rest of the connections to the wiring harness. The phase amp connection rubber booties are actually such a bitch to get off on the old controller. So if you can just fold them back and leave them folded, then that's the best thing for it. Cause if you can actually just fold them back and leave them folded over, you can have them set up for the new controller. So old controller is out, new controller is going in. I'm actually surprised on the weight difference between the two. This one's definitely heavier, even though it's smaller. 
It's great. Can't wait to get it on the bike. So EVMX made it pretty dummy proof for you. So the input on the bottom goes to the lower end of the bike, meaning the motor, and the input on the top goes to the top end of the bike and the control center and wiring harness by the lights and switches. We're gonna install the face amp cables now and essentially what you wanna do, just to set everything up super nice for yourself, you can even rest it on the bash guard and on the front wheel just to support it for now, like I have it here. It's super important to use the supply bolts that come from EVMX because they are the depth that matches the controller. So you're gonna have the exact snug fit that you need delivering the power that you need. So we're just gonna slap in our phase amp controllers. Remember, yellow, blue, green. Blue is U, V is green, and W is yellow. Remember, red is plus, and black is your neutral. Make sure you install your washer and spring washer on the phase amps and also your positive and negative bolts. And how it will simply go is the contact as close to the controller as possible with your washer on top of that and the spring washer on top of that. After the power cable is installed, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and install the bracket which holds the X9000 in place on the bike itself. It comes with two different washers, a flat washer and a pinch washer. You wanna run the pinch washer closest to the top of the bolt and the flat washer in between the bracket and the bolt. In between the bracket and the pinch washer. All right, guys, so X9000 is on the bike. It looks great. Um, we are going to do another video on A, how to set up the app, and then B, how it feels. I'm really excited to ride it for the first time, and I will uh, keep you updated. Good madness. Peace.